Welcome back everyone. We are going to talk about actual TEC efficiency slash co-op, coefficient of performance. So we're going to take a couple of examples and work through them. Uh, one would think that a TEC would have a fixed percent of say 136 or 10 or 1 or maybe 2 to 10 percent. But that's actually not the case. You could say a TEC's efficiency slash co-op could be virtually anything, depending on what you're, what you're going for or what you're trying to achieve. So we're just going to run through some examples of how the co-op can change, and it really does depend on what the outcome you're trying to achieve, as in how much heat you're trying to move, and to what delta will define what potential co-op you can have. Now this uh, is a TEC calculator that I have written and you can download this from my website. We are going to be talking about complete, completely idealistic results that you won't theoretically actually achieve. But this is theory, not reality. And there will be a difference because you're going to add a whole lot of thermal losses in it like heat sinks on either side of the TEC. Now for this example, we've just gone for this TEC, no particular reason. Uh, we, are, we have a hot side of 27 degrees, which is about 300 Kelvin. And the hot side thermal cooling efficiency is 0, 0.0, which means it is the unrealistically impossibly perfect cooler. The only thing that might get close to this would be if you applied a diamond heatsink to it. So really, you should never ever have this because this is just la la land, and this will affect your actual results. There are some examples of what you should put in there, based on computer cooling products. Uh, the reason why I use them is they actually gave you an actual result tested of the complete system, not a component of it. So this is quite a good place to start with. So here we have a TEC. We've inputted 100% of Umax or 100% of the input voltage at the desired temperature. We're moving one watt. And down here we have this. So heat moved and electricity used. And this is the combination of both. Because if you're trying to cool it, you need to cool uh, the heat you're going to move the electricity used, which is only one watt difference at the moment. Down here we have a coefficient of performance, or your efficiency, and it is a mind-blowingly bad 0.1%. We have the temperature deltas down here. Get a fantastic delta. And over here, this graph or graph shows you what would happen if we changed these numbers here. So this is what's happening. So your car was really good at one point and then just took a complete dive and pretty much bottomed out. Now, because co-op is a mathematical equation based on input power relative to heat moved, the co-op will change wildly. Now, we've got an incredibly bad co-op because we're using an awful lot of electricity, but we're only moving one watt. So we can jack the co-op up by increasing the heat load to a maximum of 519. So we'll put that in now. And bam, all of a sudden we have improved the co-op greatly. It's now 0.4756, or about 47%. Now, whether or not that's considered good or bad, I don't know, that's up to you, but we're now achieving virtually no delta. Now in this example, we of course have not achieved anything over 100, or even you could say close to over 100% co-op. So how do we achieve a co-op greater than 1? Well, first thing is you cannot run a TEC at 100%. So we need to reduce the heat load, we'll make that say 250. And if we reduce this to some number, let's go for 50%. Not sure this is going to work. It did. And bam, there we go. Now we've got a over 100% efficiency or co-op. 
And there you go. Now we can continue to reduce this. Let's say we're going to move 50 watts. And we're going to move, I don't know, was it going to work? 20%? Yep, now we're at 162%. We keep going down to 10%. What have we got? Oh, there we go, 577%. We can keep going. 1,367%. Oh, that's too much. Let's put that all the way down to 2%. And we have a co-op of four, oh, 46 or an efficiency, if you like those numbers better, of 4,605%. Awesome! That's what we're talking about, right? That's what we should be doing. Well, yes and no at the same time. As you've noticed, as I've been reducing the input voltage, the amount of heat that I could move was reducing. So if we had a 200 watt heat load, this is pointless. You could never achieve this efficiency because you can never move the 20. We could add more TCs. But let's go back to one. So that is the problem. If you reduce the input voltage to increase efficiency, quote unquote, you reduce the amount of heat you can move, and that becomes, of course, self-defeating. So we could, if we were trying to move our 200 watts, we could never achieve a co-op of 4,600 because I can't move that much. So we have to increase the input voltage to something to actually move it. Let me just grab something. Close. Okay, that's close. Right. So we ha can move 200 watts at 24% of input voltage, and we're getting a 329% efficiency or 3.2% co-op. And you go, might think, well, that's pretty good. I, I can certainly live with that. However, generally speaking, the point of using a thermoelectric device is to create a temperature differential greater than nothing or if you like, a delta greater than nothing. However, as you can see, in this case, we've only got a 2.4 degree delta, or reduction in temperature. And the reality is, when we add in all the thermal losses of adding all of this complexity to it, we will be worse off than not having the TEC in the first place. So, although we might want or think we can get a 200, uh, sorry, 330 percent efficiency, we can't do it with any tangible delta, so therefore it is still completely pointless. So yet again we have to then go, okay, well we need to either reduce load, which we can't do, or increase the input power. So if we double the input power, uh, we now have dropped the efficiency under 100% under or co-op less than 1%. But we're now achieving a 23 degree delta. At this point, we are actually, there is a point to having the TEC. The hot side is now 23 degrees hotter than the cold side, or maybe that should be said the other way around. The cold side is now 23 degrees lower than the hot side while moving a 200 watt load. And we were unable to achieve a carb greater than one in this example but we achieved our desired result of a temperature of 3.3 degrees, assuming that that was our goal. So what actual tangible co-op you're going to achieve depends on how much heat load you're putting in or trying to move and what kind of delta you're trying to achieve. And that will define what your actual best theoretical efficiency slash co-op you can actually achieve in the real world. However, our example is not the real world. We have got a CW of zero or a completely and utterly impossibly perfect cooling device. Uh, if we just to chuck a point one in there, see what happens. 
Okay, it's made everything much worse. And you can see that on these graphs. So with that kind of cooling, we cannot achieve our goal if our goal was a temperature of 3 degrees. And in this case, no matter how much power we actually gave it, which uh, this is, that's the hot side temperature, this is the cold side temperature. And this grey line here is if you just didn't bother with the TEC at all. You just applied this cooling, or this heat sink, directly to the your heat load. So it's quite in interesting at some points the you're much worse off actually having a TEC than you were to just apply the cooling directly to your heat load. But you guys can play with this. I have done a number of videos on explaining this calculator and I have updated it to what you see here. Uh, but like I said, you can download this, change the different thermoelectric cooling modules, and you can work out roughly, theoretically, ish what kind of achievable efficiency slash cop you can get in your well for whatever you're imp you've inputted this doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a cop of 73 it doesn't mean you're going to get one of 63 it doesn't mean you're going to get one of 2 or 10 percent or 136 it will vary depending on your var variables and the reality is these variables will change from what you've put in this theoretical calculator so actual what is achieved may be different but you'll get a, a feeling for it and that should be enough so hopefully you've enjoyed this video which really actually goes into the delicacies I guess of co-op and a TZ module that it's not a fixed number because it's relative to heat moved versus input uh, energy and the it's not a straight line for a TEC so it really does make a, a big difference if you can reduce the input power from 100% down so we've only I think got one more in this maybe maybe not one more series of videos hopefully you've enjoyed this one please subscribe if you like it uh, subscribe subscribe if you don't like it give us a like if you like it give us a like if you don't like it but we all know you will have already gone if you didn't like this all right guys i shall see you on the next one bye bye